Hi, fifth grade. Today in math, we are doing lesson 8.7, and it is over reading and making line plots. Now, line plots are something that you should have seen before in other grades. However, this is a good review and a different um, way for us to look at line plots to make sure that we haven't forgotten how to read them or how to make them on our own. So they're kind of like a type of graph. So let's just go ahead and jump in right here at the top. It says two number cubes labeled one through six were tossed 30 times. This frequency table shows the number of times each total occurred. So we have a chart right here that shows us. So they're rolling like dice, except they just have numbers instead of the dots on there. And they add both of the dots up. So like if this was their roll, they have a six and a two, so their total would have been eight, and they would have marked that down here in their table. It says you can organize data on a line plot to make the data easier to analyze. So instead of just looking at these numbers in this chart, we can put it on the line plot to make it easier to see like which one was the most common and different things like that. So the first thing we need to do is complete the line plot because they've already done part of it, but not all of it. They did for two, three, and four it looks like, but they need to fill in the rest of it. So we're gonna start by doing that. So. How many times did they get a total of five? Look on my chart, that was three times. So I need to make three dots here. In order to keep my line plot nice and neat, I'm going to try to make my dots about the same size as theirs and kind of space them out the same as they did there so that it stays all neat and that it's easy to see. Next, I'm gonna go over to six. They got a six five times. So I need to mark it five times on here. Remember, I'm trying to space it out the best I can, trying to make them all about the same size. This one, since it had five, should definitely be taller than the three. Then I'm gonna go on to seven. They got that six times. So again, trying to space it out nicely, making all my dots about the same size. This one is taller than the other one because they got this more often. So it should end up taller when I finish my line plot. Then I go on to eight, they got eight four times. I'm just looking at my chart to see how many times they got that. Putting in my dots here, four times, so I need four dots. Nine, they also got four times based on my chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Remember, this one should be the same height as the other one because they got the, the exact same number of times there. 10, they got two times. 11, they got one time. Might be hard for you to see my chart, but that's what it says. And then for 12, they got it zero times. So I'm not gonna put anything on the 12. I'm just going to leave it blank because we don't need that. Now down here on my line plot, it looks like they're wanting us to put some kind of title. What would be a good title for this line plot? I'm gonna put um, totals rolled on cubes. Totals rolled on cubes. They were using these cubes and these were the totals when they added the two numbers together. So I think that would be a good title. That's not my only option for a title. There would be other options too. Something that goes along with the chart is what we want to come up with. All right, let's see if we can answer the questions that they ask us. Based on this sample, describe the totals that are least likely to be tossed. So looking up there at our line plot, that's gonna help us here. Which total number is the least likely for me to get on a dice? Well, I'm gonna say 12, because out of all of those rolls, they never got a 12. So I'm gonna say 12 is the least likely because they never rolled that. Now, it doesn't mean that they couldn't roll a 12. They could, it's just not very likely to happen. Because think about that. If I'm rolling two dice, what's the only way that I can get a 12? The only way is gonna be a six plus a six. I would have to roll two sixes to be able to get a 12. That's the only way. Now, there are some other numbers that would be least likely to or less likely than the others. For instance, two and 11. Those only happened one time, so those aren't very likely either because if we think of two, you'd have to roll a one and a one. That's the only way you could get a two. Or if we think of 11, I would have to roll a six and a five. That's the only way that I can get an 11. 
So those two are also not very common, and I can tell because they didn't happen very much, but 12 didn't happen at all. So based on this line plot, 12 is going to be our least common of all the options. It says, based on this sample, describe the totals that are most likely to be tossed. Well, if I had to pick one number, which number would you say is the most likely to be rolled? I would say seven because that had the most rolls of that kind. So seven because they rolled that the most. And if I think about that, I'm gonna try to think about why. What are the different ways that I could get a seven? Well, I could do a one and a six. I could do a two and a five. Or I could do a three and a four. Oops, three plus four. So there are three different ways that I can get a seven by rolling those two dice. That's a lot more ways than I could get a 12 because I had to get a six and six to get a 12. I have three ways to get a seven. Now, if they wanted the next most likely, I would say six because it was pretty close to seven. And if I think about six, I could do like one and five, two and four, three and three. So there's several ways that I could get a six too. But seven was the most common out of the rolls that they did. So I would say seven first, but if they wanted another one, I could also say six. Now, there are lots of other questions we could ask about this line plot. Like if I said, how many times did they roll less than six? Well, anything less than six would be all of those. So how many times did they roll less than six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would be my answer. Or if I said, how many total rolls were there? I would count up all of those dots because each one of those dots is a roll. So if I counted up all of those dots on my line plot, I would get 30. Okay, there are lots of questions that I could ask. Or I could say like, how many rolls equaled a 10? One, two would be my answer. So lots of questions we could ask based on this line plot. Let's go ahead and go down here and look at our other line plot that we have in our notes today. It says, for 10 days, Mario measured the amount of food that his cat Toby ate each day. The amounts he recorded are shown in the table at the right. Graph the results on the line plot. So we have our line plot here. My numbers are probably hard to read for you. I'm sorry for that. But they are all numbered down here. And I'm going to use this chart to make my line plot. My first number here is 1 8th. So I'm looking at my chart over here and there is no 1 8th. So I'm just going to leave that one blank and I'm going to go to my next one. My next number is 1 4th. So I'm looking over here. Two days he ate 1 4th. So I need to make two marks. I'm going to use small X's because they're quicker to make. You could use dots or little X's, whatever. You just need to keep them all the same. So up above we had to use dots because they already started with dots. But since we're starting this, I'm going to use X's. My next number on my line plot is 3 8 So I look over at my chart. One day he ate 3 8 Again, if I'm using X's, I'm going to try to make them all the same size and space them out evenly to make it neat. My next amount is 1 half which on my chart was three days. So I need three X's there trying to space them out evenly. My next amount is five eighths on my chart. That is also three days. So better space those out. Should be about the same height as the other if I'm doing it neat. My next amount is three fourths. That was just for one day. And my final amount is seven eighths and that isn't on the chart. So I will leave it blank as well. Looks like I need a title again here. What could I title this line plot so that they knew what it was about? Um, food Toby ate each day. That's what I think I'm going to title mine. Food Toby ate, oops, Toby with a Y, ate each day. I should be able to read the title of your line plot and tell what you are talking about. So this is the amount of food that the cat Toby ate each day. So food Toby ate each day tells me that's what I'm talking about there. Now I could ask several questions here. What if I asked you, how many 
days did Toby eat half of a cup? Well, I would find half and I would count the days. One, two, three. So he ate that for three days. That would be my answer. Or if I said, how many days did Toby eat more than half a cup? Well, more than half would be anything past a half. So it'd be all those. So one, two, three, four would be my answer. Could ask lots of questions here. You just have to use the line plot to help you answer them. Let's see what question they are asking us. What is the total amount of food Toby ate over the 10 days? Explain how you got your answer. All right, so we need to know all of that food added together because total means to add it all up. All right, let's start here. One fourth, he did that for two days. So I have one fourth and one fourth. Well, how much is one fourth plus one more fourth? That's two fourths, so I'm gonna write that right up here. That's two fourths on that day total. Okay, then go here, three eighths. Well, it was just for one day, so that would obviously just be three eighths because he only ate it for one day. Here I have one half, so I have a half, a half, and a half. So one half plus one half plus one half would be three halves. Five eighths I have for three days. So he ate five eighths plus five eighths plus five eighths, which would be 15 eighths. And then he ate three fourths for one day, so that would just be three fourths. So notice I just counted all of that up and I'm writing the total for each amount up there at the top. Since he ate one fourth for two days, I need to do one fourth plus one fourth. Each one of those X's equals that amount. Now, I know that I need to add all of these together to see how much total food he ate, but there's a problem. My bottom numbers are not the same. Well, I can make them the same. We could cross multiply, but I have several different numbers going on here. So I'm gonna take a different approach. What is the biggest bottom number that I have? Well, my biggest bottom number is an eight. So I'm gonna see if I can make the other fractions have an eight on the bottom. So let's start over here with our four. Could I take four times something and get it to an eight? I could times it by two. So if I take four times two, it changes to an eight which means I need to take my top number times two. So two times two is four. So I could change that to four eighths. Let's find our other four. If I take the bottom times two, I get an eight. So if I take the top times two, I get a six. Remember, as long as we multiply the top and bottom by the same, it's okay, we can change it. Now, are all my bottom numbers an eight? No, I still have one right here. So can we take two times anything to change it to an eight? I can multiply by four because two times four is eight. So three times four is 12. Now are all my bottom numbers an eight? Yes, so now I can easily add them all up. Once all my bottom numbers match, I'm just adding. I know my bottom number is gonna be an eight. So I need to add my top numbers. Four plus three plus 12 plus 15 plus six. So I'm gonna do that down here. I'm gonna put 15 and then 12, six, three, and four. I'm gonna double count. I should have one, two, three, four, five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. All right, add them up. Being really careful here. Five and two is seven. Well, plus this three would be 10 plus six is 16, plus four more is 20. So put my zero, carry my two, two, three, four. So I got a 40 when I added all those up. So that would be 40 eighths. Now, can I leave that as 40 eighths? No, I need to divide to fix that. So 40 divided by eight, that should be a quick one for you. That's exactly five. So my answer would be five. And then I need a label. I'm gonna look back at that chart. How are they measuring this food? Five, well, I see a C right here, which stands for cups. So five cups of food is how much Toby would eat in 10 days. That's not very much food, I don't feel like. Okay, now it says explain how you got your answer. We did all of our work and we showed our work here, so that can be our explanation. But all I have to do is count up the, for each amount and then add it all together to get the total. So 
So total eight, five cups. Remember, there are lots of other questions that I could ask about these line plots. I just have to look carefully to be able to answer the questions that they are asking me. You can go ahead and get started on your assignment. Good luck. Bye.